We just want them to remove their comment section. Oh boy, was that a mistake. Everything they did. I I'll tell you what, man, look. You want to complain about Republicans or you think they're doing a good job, put that aside. Google. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I want to explain to you guys a very strange situation that happened to me a few days ago while I was out driving my, my work car, my Ford Fusion. So as many of you already know, I drive for a living. Uh, I'm, I'm a courier. I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, I don't have a CDL, but I would consider myself a professional driver. I mean, I've been doing this for a very, very long time, and I do consider myself a pretty good driver. I mean, everybody makes mistakes, and stuff happens. <laughs> we'll put it that way. So I'm out doing my route. So I'm driving along down a two-lane road that merges down to one lane, and I end up having a guy driving a 26-foot box truck, you know, a pretty large box truck. He ends up completely ignoring the merge warning signs and merges into the side of my car. <laughs> so um, it could have been a lot worse, and frankly, I'm surprised it wasn't. But I was absolutely shocked that some guy driving a, a box truck, who clearly is a professional driver, literally completely didn't care that he was going to be driving into the side of my car. And just to give this a little bit more context, I'm going to show the video again once more right here. New sites, Zero Hedge and The Federalist will no longer be able to generate revenue from any advertisements served by Google Ads. However, Google then came out shortly after the publication and said The Federalist was never demonetized. We just want them to remove their comment section. Oh boy, was that a mistake. Everything they did. I I'll tell you what, man, look. You want to complain about Republicans or you think they're doing a good job, put that aside. Google. All right, so now that you've seen the video a second time, you can clearly see that this guy just clearly merged into my lane and into my car. Now, <laughs> I'm really amazed at how little damage was caused by this incident. Now, as you guys can see on the side of my car, Everything looks, you know, more or less as it should be. This right here is all the damage I ended up with. And that is thankfully because of the fact that my whole mirror gets kicked forward. Now, you guys could hear the thunk in the video. And this right here is where, that right there is where the back of his truck made contact, grabbed my mirror, and knocked it forward. Now, this right here is not a terribly big deal. So all things considered, that obviously could have gone way worse than it did. Now, I'm not too concerned about having a scratch on my car. That's not the only damage that this car with 235,000 miles has on it. But it definitely was the principle of the thing. And mostly because he ended up calling the cops on me. Guy hits me blames me and then calls the police on me for him hitting me. I know it sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> that's exactly what happened. The guy came out of his truck, berated me, saying I don't know how to drive, proceeded to tell me he didn't hit my car, and then decided he was going to call the police on me. So my dash cam, of course, caught just about all of this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the video up. I'm going to do a voiceover and explain to you exactly what happened step by step in this whole process and show you exactly what went down, at least from my perspective. All right, guys. So here we are at the, uh, the dash cam footage. Um, I did have to make a little change in the corner here because the uh, date and time was reset. It wasn't accurate. So I just uh, edited over it and put the, uh, the actual day that it took place. Um, so... I'm just going to start the video here. I'm not going to play the audio because I had a podcast going in the background, which you, you don't need to hear all that. But so I, I'm heading into the town of Oconomowoc, which is uh, West Milwaukee. I, I drive this road five times a week. It's part of my regular route. It's 45 miles an hour, which you can, you can see up there. I'm in the center lane because I know the right lane merges off and continues down the highway. The left two lanes go into, into the town where I need to make my delivery. It kicks down at this point in time to 35 miles an hour. And 
I, I am always in this middle lane because I, I know what is coming up here. So uh, did the video did start recording a little bit uh, early. So I'm just going to scroll ahead here. And as you can see, that's the turn off. Now at this point here, I come to a stop. And after this intersection, it is 25 miles an hour. Uh, next to me, you will see that uh, there was this white car here. So the left lane, you know, that, that, that box truck or stray truck, whatever you want to call it, was nowhere at any point in time in front of me. So this light turns green as I pull up to it. And we, of course, proceed from the intersection. As you can see, the one, the next intersection in front of me, now it's 25 miles an hour. The white car left of me has turned over to, to make a left and we are still red. So at this point in time, I noticed that stray truck was behind me. He was flying. And when that white car to my left shifted over to make the turn, he also moved over. But he wasn't, from what I remember just glancing in my mirror and seeing, he wasn't slowing down. And I think he was trying to time this intersection and hit the green light without having to come to a stop, which ultimately, as you can see here, he completely failed because that the red, he had to stop for the red too. We were both stopped at that point in time. I do remember that. Now, just want to point out here that this sign here says, and it's hard to tell, but I'll show you later, lane ends merge right, right, R-I-G-H-D. <laughs> All right, that's very important. So we continue on. I'm accelerating away from the intersection, you know, and, and just keep in point that that guy is in a big truck. He had to come to a stop at that light, just like I did, and there was no point in my mind where I was like, hey, this guy's gonna fly and get in front of me. Uh, he's driving a big, apparently loaded truck. I'm driving a car. Just usually doesn't work out that way. Again, reinforcement that that lane ends. I'm gonna turn the audio up just a little bit here so you can once again hear him actually make contact with my vehicle and then I'm gonna point something else to you, uh, out to you here. So here we go. Guys, we just want them to remove their comment section. Oh boy. Was that a mistake? Blaring his Everything horn. Everything they did. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Look, and just decides. Want to complain about boom, Republicans? Make contact or with my car. Merge that aside. Now, you could make the argument that oh, he didn't see you there. If we were right next to each other from the light, or blah blah blah. No, there's no way that this guy did not know that I was there. Now, I just going to back this up a little bit and point out two things. First off, notice what this uh, lane that he is in now what that has had um, had become after his lane end ended. Uh, it turns into a left-right common turn lane. Now also, to my right is, well, there's a guy standing over here, and then it looks like a family or a bunch of friends out taking their kids out for a ride, uh, you know, or uh, a stroll on the sidewalk. I don't have a shoulder over here or anywhere that I can go. This lane has now ended and become something else. I am pretty much where I can be and that is it. This guy who knows I'm here, lays on his horn and just decides to do whatever he wanna do. Now, if I would have done something at this, now, now my dash cam has 170 degree field of view. I believe that's correct. But I mean, it sees the whole front of my car. He, this truck is only in front of me here. He, now he is right next to me at this point in time, like literally hood to hood, he is right next to me. Had he done anything else sooner, if he hit me back here or whatever, he could have put these people in extreme danger. I, I mean, imagine he had hit me on the side right here and sent my car off the road into these people, how, how terrible that would have been, okay? That, I mean, a lot of people don't think about stuff like that, but I mean, a situation like this, that could have ended a lot worse. Now, granted, that's not what happened, but just, just keep that in mind. I, I mean, there was nowhere for me to go here. And if you would have hit me, I could have creamed into those people. Not cool. Not cool at all. So, so as we've seen, this is the point where, you know, he, he makes contact with my vehicle. Now he's driving in the middle again, decides that he's going to come over. Now he's going to ride the yellow line and then he just is slowing down here for what reason I could assume it. Oh, okay. He's going to turn here and this is the spot that he's decided that, you know, he wants to stop and we'll address the situation or at least that's what I thought. So I follow him in 
he stops. So I'm, I would say a good 10 feet away from the back, from, uh, from the back of his truck. And then he puts it in reverse and then he stops. Okay. So, um, this is where things become interesting. So, um, I'm, I'm not going to play any of the audio because I left my radio on and you can't hear what's going on outside of the vehicle, but I'm just going to give you what my recollection of events here was. So, um, now point out that he's out of his truck and his truck is actually rolling forward. Now I did blur the guy because I, I'm just, you know, I, it, just blurring the guy. Okay. For privacy issues. All right. I just, yeah. So the guy comes out of his vehicle and right here, he starts berating me, telling me how I don't know how to drive. I don't know how to merge. I don't know how to yield to all the different things that he's has going through his head at that point in time that I was in his way. I was supposed to let him merge. I don't know where that possibly could even exist <laughs> at this point in time, but whatever. Now I'm taken aback at this point. So I, I, I started giving it back to him a little bit. I did not expect this at this point in time. Now I thought maybe the guy was going to go, Oh, Hey man, sorry about that. You know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So I'm, exp you know, telling him I drive this road every day. Your lane ends. I was in my lane. What are you doing? Blah, 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 kind of sort of thing. So we draw back and forth a little bit. Now keep in mind, his truck's still moving. <laughs> That's the thing that I can't believe about. Now he's still, you know, colorful language going back and forth a little bit here. So he turns around like he's walking away. And I tell him, you hit me. And he goes, oh, I didn't touch you, blah, blah, blah. Completely denying the fact that he made contact with my, with my car. And I'm like, well, you did. I mean, you pulled right into me. So at this point, I've explained to him that I have a dash cam. And he's like, well, I have a dash cam too. And all this. And like, he's like, fine. And then, we'll, we'll, you know, I'm, I'm calling the police. So I'm like, okay. I mean, that's what you want to do. All right, fine. So I go back to my car. I'm going to proceed to uh, look up the footage for my dash cam here, which clearly I have. And all of a sudden he starts rushing back and he's like, blah, 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 ranting and raving about, again, everything about how stupid it is. You know, like the guy did, first off, he didn't apparently know that he hit me. Secondly, this, he, and I, I, I asked him, or I said to him, I'm like, well, hey, if you want to go this route, you know, we can take the time. I said, clearly you're, you're in a hurry, but he's like, no, I deliver here. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that, that's interesting. So he's gone and gotten his phone. And I said, dude, you, you hit me. I looked at my mirror. I could see that scratch there. It was flipped forward. He starts laughing, telling, oh, if I would have hit you, I would rip that whole thing off. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. We'll let the police figure it out. Blah, blah, blah. So at this point, I'm going over to look at the side of his truck. And like, he looks like he's going to like tackle me or something at this point in time. Now I'm pointing out on the side of his vehicle where you can actually see the paint from my mirror on that little thing back there, um, you know, the lift gate, the bump stop or whatever. And again, he's like, oh, that's been there. That's been there since I've been driving the truck, you know, that, that whole type of thing, just completely denying this whole situation. So <laughs> right here at this point, I'm like, okay, this is, uh, I'm like, okay, th this whole thing has gotten ri ridiculous. I'm laughing to myself here. I'm like, fine. You know, he's like, yeah, well, I'm calling the police on you right now, blah, 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 all this crap. And I just was like, okay, whatever, man. So I, I, I was, to be perfectly honest with you, I was almost in disbelief at what was going on at this point in time. I mean, like, <laughs> it, it was literally a case of this guy literally thought he did absolutely nothing wrong in this entire situation. And I was entirely to blame with everything that had happened. Like, I had done him wrong in every way possible. And there was literally nothing that he could have done differently. Now keep in mind, and you're going to see here, his truck starts rolling away as he's on the phone and didn't even notice it. But yeah. So at this point I had to stop recording from my dash cam because I needed to connect my phone to download the footage and everything. But again, one more thing here is like, if you watch this truck right here from the point that we stop and you can see that right here, now we're stopped. I'm going to roll it forward here. He's out of his truck and his truck is not parked. Okay. 
And this was where I was, I had to make a cut because I was trying to download the footage off my phone. His truck ends up up there before he gets control of it. So I don't know, again, I'm not trying to be mean to the guy, but I mean, honestly, he really was a jerk to me the entire time. And there, there was more to it uh, than this, but long story short was when the police got there, um, this guy runs right up to him and immediately starts John about how I had done him wrong and all this other stuff. The officer turns and looks at me. Most of the police are not stupid. They see stuff. They've seen things like this before. And usually the first person that starts to protest usually is the one <laughs> that you got to pay a little more attention to. So the officer, just a short and sweet of it, the officer looks over at me, comes over by me to get my side of the story. I just tell him, Hey, I, I got, I got it all on dash cam. I let the guy, you know, I let the officer watch the footage. He goes, okay, that's all I needed to see. He goes over, the guy keeps drawing with him. The officer actually gets to the point where he raises his voice with this guy and tells him, you know, that he saw the footage, he saw what happened, and basically nothing that he's saying made any sense, you know. So um, I I don't know. I, it's, it's one of those things where it was almost so ridiculous, I, I actually couldn't believe it. But it ended up getting to a point where, you know, the officer told me that the damage on my vehicle was not – reportable so i mean i was basically at that point anyways but the thing was is that um this guy would not admit any fault the the basically where we parted ways was that the guy got to the point where he would only say that we both were at fault and i turned to the officer and i said hey i <laughs> i've got a brother i know how this stuff goes and then he said well what do you want to do and i said and i turned to the guy and i asked him i said do you have a cdl and he said yes and I told him that, you know, I wasn't going to let a scratch jeopardize his license in any way, shape or form. It was just a scratch on my car. But I did tell him, you know, that from my perspective, I told him, but I'm only going to do this on the condition that you never, ever do something like this again to anybody else on the road, because he's got a big truck. He's got a CDL. He has a higher responsibility. Even if I was being a complete jerk to him or doing something completely wrong, it's his responsibility being a commercial driver and his license to do everything in his, in his, everything in his power to protect those people around him and keep them safe. And that was something he definitely did not do. So um, I want to just point out one other thing real quick before I drop out of this. All right. So I'm here on Google Maps and I just want to show you because the video footage is not uh, great, but this is the intersection where this kind of all started. I'm in Oconomowoc, again, like I said, which is just west of Milwaukee. Now, this is that intersection that we left from. So that guy came barreling in, in his truck from behind, over there and into this lane. Now, I'm glad that this Google, <laughs> Google car is in this lane because you can see how this plays out. So I'm just going to go ahead. This is the lane that he was in. I'm over here, all right? Now, he tells me that my lane ended and that I was supposed to yield to him. He's a professional driver. He's been, he knows this place. He drives this every day. He knows how this road works. That was one of the first things that he said to me when he hopped out of his truck. Well, apparently he does not because lane ends, merge right could not be, I, I mean, it literally could not be any more clear than that. This over here, a little confusing. This, super clear. Lane ends, merge right. And then you continue forward and whoa, oh, what, what do you notice? The lane mo moves over to the right. You are supposed to merge right. Your lane ends merge right. Now, like I said before, he told me that he had to turn left into that place to make his delivery, which just happens to be right at the crest of this hill here. What do you see right in front of his point of view right here? Oh, that is what we would call a turn lane left turn right turn shared common turn lane what other option did he have have that he could have done other than merge into my car in the lane next to him well he very easily could have just stayed right here his turn was coming up right up here just a few hundred feet ahead there was no reason that if he was unable to merge that he even had to leave this lane i i mean i know you're not supposed to drive in the lane but when you have the choice of hitting the car next to you or staying in the lane, I'm pretty sure staying in the lane is the better option. All right. So, yeah. So as you can see up here, this is where he was delivering. 
I mean, that's maybe like a dozen clicks up the road. All right. This is where we turned into. This is where we stopped and jawed with each other and had the police come to and everything. There's no reason he had to even come over here because he had to turn left. So he rushed to get in front of me so that he could slow down and turn left in front of my car. And I'm going to be honest with you. I hate that when people do that. That is just ridiculous. Why do you need to rush in front of somebody to then slow them down and make your turn? There's no reason under most circumstances. I mean, unless there's a whole bunch of cars there, but then slow down, get in behind somebody and make your turn. I don't care if you're going right or left. It just... That grates on me when people do that, rush, you know, rush down the road, then inconvenience you because they had to make a turn. Like do a little planning ahead of time and drive defensively and plan ahead to make your turns and all that stuff. So, but yeah, that, that, that ultimately is the thing that r- really got me the most about this is the fact that he had to move over and hit my car right here, which this road does uh, kind of take a little bit of a jaunt to the left up here. And that's probably where he misjudged what he was doing. I think he was just trying to scare me. And then he actually made contact with my car right here. I'm not going to necessarily necessarily say that it was road rage, but it definitely kind of felt like the guy was raging on me a little bit. Now, I don't know if he had a bad day at work or what the case was, but yeah, yeah, that, uh, that is how that played out. So now with showing you guys that and, you know, my explanation of everything that happened, I just want to go on record and say that I have absolutely nothing but respect for people that drive for a living. I do it. I know it's not an easy job. Um, A lot of people completely, completely underestimate how difficult driving for a living is. And it's also a very dangerous job. I mean, as you can see that that whole thing could have gone way worse and it could have got some hurt, everything like that. People have bad days. People make mistakes. I don't fault anybody for that. Thankfully, something like that's never happened to me before. Hopefully, it never happens again. If any of you guys out there drive for a living, please be careful. If you drive for a living and you drive trucks like that, please understand that I don't care what anybody else does while you're driving. You have a responsibility to drive as safely as you can. And even if other people around you are making mistakes from your perspective... You are bigger than everybody else on the road, and if that guy would not have stopped moving over, he would have completely tore into the side of my car, destroyed my car, and probably been able to carry on with his day, whereas I would not have been. So I'm going to chalk this one up to guy had a bad day. At the end, I wasn't going to punish the guy. I mean, if he would have just hopped out of his truck and he would have said to me, oh, you know, crap, man, sorry, didn't, uh, you know, I thought I have enough room to clear over. It would have been nothing. We would have maybe shaken hands. I don't know with everything going on if that would even happen. But the guy's attitude, like every step of this whole thing was something he did wrong and created the situation and made it worse than it needed to be. If you do something wrong, own up to it. Had he come out and just said, hey man, I'm sorry. Never happened again. Blah, blah, blah. That would have been the end of it. And we would have been done and over. But sometimes people don't know how to swallow their pride when they make a mistake. And I think that a lot of people need to work on that. I mean, uh, everybody, again, gets in situations when they're frustrated. They blow up on people. It happens to everybody. But I think this world would be a lot better place if everybody, when they made a mistake, just owned up to it, apologized, did what was necessary to remedy the situation. And that was it. So that's my little soapbox on this one. But... Yeah, just just please be careful out there. And if you have a CDL, you drive big trucks, you have a much higher responsibility, you know, to control what you do and don't do stuff like that because you could get someone killed. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Um, That is how a box truck sideswiped my car, (laughs) blamed me, and called the police on me. So I know it's an unusual situation. I'm still working on some of my other videos that I promised, but I just figured this was too good of a video not to make and actually post up and bring you guys. Still got my car, still in one piece, more or less. <laughs> got way too many miles on it, but hey, you know, it's been a great car and I'm glad that this irresponsible guy didn't, uh, didn't wreck it for me. But at the end of the day, no harm was done, nobody was hurt, and I ended up with a, a good story to tell. Oh, and also, everybody out there, get a dash cam because if I went ahead had this, it would have been my word against his.
and the video told the cop everything that he needed to, to know about what happened. So get a dash cam if you don't have one. So I thank you guys for watching this and uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.